welcome, welcome to, to the Northampton, welcome to the Northampton Commission on Disabilities. This meeting is being audio taped and videotaped, um, and now we will um, do an introduction of members, and we can go around and say our names so we know who's here. I will start. I am Tori Eklund, and I'm the chair of the committee, and we'll go this way. My way? Your way. Uh, Susan McCrary, vice chair. Ruth McGrath, secretary. Anna Coyle, member. Dave Horton, member. Mike Yagi. Jamie Perry from the district attorney's office, guest speaker. Cindy Schubert, a member. Roy Martin, a member. City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge, member. Gabby Shaughnessy, member. ADA coordinator. Liaison. Yes. Please thank you. This wonderful com commission. Commission. Yes. Thank you. Our commission. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta get used to that. Um, yeah, really. Should we acknowledge the public? Yeah. Not yet. Mm -hmm. um, so now we move to approval of the minutes fra from the April 16th meeting. And I believe we also need to approve the meetings, the minutes yes. from the February yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. let's do them both. Move to approve. So for um, I have a correction on one. The April minutes, it's the yellow piece of paper mm -hmm. because I um, incorrectly identified um, one of the um, conversations. Ruth does the minutes, and then I went through and I mislabeled what it was saying. So um, after two hits, I finally mm -hmm. got it, and so the yellow is what you're looking at for April. Um, I have a, I have a, um, just a correction of a typo on the April ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's in the section it says, it's on the part where we're talking about our last month's guest speaker, mm -hmm. and it says, Tori Eklund stated that this equipment would also be valuable to any visually impaired individual. During live performances, it is possible to obtain a description of what is happening on state, and it should be stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stage. Oh, okay, good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, do you want to vote on April minutes first? Okay. So, um, can we have a motion to approve the April 16th minutes? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now, the February minutes. I'll make a motion to vote on the February minutes. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we okay. had no March meetings, so there wasn't mm -hmm. uh, no minutes. Right. Thank you. Those are done. <laughs> So um, now the next item on the agenda is public comment. Are there any members of the public who have anything they would like to say to the committee, con commission? Okay. We do have one. Oh, we do have one? Joyce, I just told it down I have a great one. Sorry that I have to use housing, but I do. And I'd like to just mention something uh, from what I understand. Uh, a lot of the problems, housing was originally for older people. Elders. And now we have a mixed population, and I'm not criticizing the population. I, just, I know what they're going through in the mental health area and the rehab and so forth. But it's a very poor system. It, a lot it means is a lot of police calls, and a lot of things don't get solved. People are taken to court. And what troubled me, there were, and again, I, it may have been resolved, but at one time, a young man that lives at Savile was making a tapping noise with his cane. He had, May I say blind, or do you prefer visually impaired? You can say whatever you mm -hmm. like. Well, he, he, he needs that cane, he can't see. He's as a very uh, helpful person, and what have you. And at, at one point, he was, as I understand it, was going to be taken to court. That is not a court problem. Uh, the lady under, speaks, under him was complaining, and I'm thinking, why not just keep get, getting some good carpeting? And so those kinds of things mm. keep happening to people with disabilities. Those kinds of things where the answer is you have to go to court. And I hope in time there can be a committee, a good social service network, and it's not a criticism of the one person who's supposed to answer 600 different people's needs. But I, I just want to bring that to your attention if it's happening to everybody else yeah, or anyone else. I have but a I problem. just thought that was very unfair. Mm -hmm. That if you have any leads for people can carry people legal assistance or social services, you know, pro bono or some such. So we yep. don't have 75-year-old women being 
Okay, City Councilor. Um, anyways, we had an intense meeting Monday on social services and veterans affairs, and I usually invite mostly every agency there is throughout the city throughout the year. And I had safe passage there. And Pat Keller, who also deals with through housing authority and so forth, they this has been brought up about elderly people and trying to find a place for them to live where it is safe, a good environment right down the line. There's a big problem with this because at one time, all of these were just supposed to have been for senior center, senior citizens way back. And something happened, I think, Patty, because you tried yourself way back. Right, when they were moving the senior center. Exactly. It's, it's how disabled was determined by the... But there is, what I'm going to suggest to you is to call Peg Keller. Okay. Yep, Peg Keller. It's K-E-L-L-E-R. Uh -huh. And I also have the director of Safe Passage now who's going to be working with Peg Keller on housing and so forth and problems that are occurring. And her telephone number is 587. 586. No, no, no. Peg Keller is... Oh, I'm sorry. Is, I thought you meant our director. No. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, Peg Keller is 587-1288. And tell Peg I told you to give her a call. I just want to make one more comment. I'm not complaining about elderly people. It was better to have it that way. I'm saying people with disabilities aren't being handled well. On the other hand, common good is not being respected in the case where, and I had called Safe Passage among other places, okay. where we have three, five women over 75 being threatened with court by a person who is not well, in my entrenched opinion, other people's Okay, so, I'd like you to attend the meeting June 17th on a Monday on social services no, not June, it's July, I'm sorry. That's July 15th at 5 o'clock p.m. at City Council Chambers, and that's under um, Social Services and Veterans Affairs. And I have Jonathan Heights coming. Um, I also have John McKenna who's coming. And I have two other people coming. And I think that will be, because we have public comment, I think that would be very wise for you to come to that and bring this up because that director of housing will be there. And I think that is the right spot to do this on July 15th. This is about everybody, not just elders. No, I, I, I think, it's, I think, I think yeah. it's a very good idea to be there, mm -hmm. to come <clears> forth, <throat> because we will be talking about housing, all the apartments, Okay, and you can bring that issue up about people problems with disabilities. I, I also have a response to this. Go ahead. Um, and if um, there's an organization called Mass Fair Housing mm -hmm. that deals with housing discrimination, and if that person mm -hmm. believes that they are being discriminated against on the basis of disability, which is a protected class um, mm -hmm. under the Mass Fair Housing laws, then um, that might be a worthwhile agency to, for that person to contact and see if there's anything that can be done to help. If that person feels that, that individual that you mentioned feels that they're being discriminated against because they need their cane for mobility and it's a problem for them to use it where they're living, then it's possible that um, Mass Fair Housing might be able to help. And I actually should have that phone number um, if that would be if you of, of interest. And I cast it on to his, mm -hmm. a person who kind of keeps an eye on him. I'll right. the phone number if you have it. Okay, it's 413-539-9796. You're welcome. And believe me, you should come to that meeting on July 15th. And whoever, you, whoever you'd like to bring, please bring them. Bring them because I think it's very beneficial because we will be having a caseworker who works with a mixture of all the apartments throughout. And that is the place to bring up these concerns. And I'm also going to ask Peg Keller, which I know she's going to be there through housing, okay? Boy, has his hand up. 
Okay, Roy? Yeah, yes, Stuart. Uh, Roy Martin, 81 Con Street. Now, I've been elected the president of the Tenants Association over there at the Salvo House. And, uh, you know, we have these little problems like that quite a bit of the time. Now, I know I lived, I lived under a fella right there. He died two weeks ago. And, you know, I could hear him when he was in his rocking chair. You know, and because the floors are cement floors, but the ceiling is a cement ceiling. It was made just one, one layer in between. That, that's the way they were made, them buildings. And of course, yes, if there was rug on the floor, right, it'd be different. But with rug on the floor, someone that is visually impaired that has to use a cane, and they're using it for walking, they can't hear with a rug on the floor. I don't believe, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not visually impaired, so I don't know exactly how that works. Uh, but, you know. Uh, well, it's possible that there may be a solution that may be able mm -hmm. to be worked mm -hmm. out. Yeah. So. Okay. So, moving on, um, we are going to do one item of new business before we move to our guest speaker. Um, and that item is. Um, the liaison for the parking subcommittee. Would you like me to speak to that? And yes. Oh, yeah. yes. So um, the transportation and parking has a subcommittee, and um, they had offered a, we would have a liaison from this committee um, to deal with and work on uh, handicap parking. That pretty much is the only topic, um, but other things may come up. So. Um, if the committee, I'm sorry, the commission would elect someone from this commission to serve as a liaison. And it pretty well, much is bringing people, you know, we'll give information, you bring back information. Right. Is there anybody on this committee that would be interested in being on it? What do they need? I don't, I don't know. What well, they met yesterday because Ruth and I were outside mm -hmm. when Sam came out. Mm -hmm. So that was Monday. Mm -hmm. So I would assume it must have been what five o'clock when yeah. they meet. I don't know, but it, it was a Monday. Any interest? You were interested. Well, I, I would be interested in it. Uh, mm. You know, I, but I had said, you know, I had been approached about it. But I had said it had to come up to the committee first in case someone else was interested in it. You know, so that they could put their name in <coughs> uh, because I didn't want to just be well. Okay, you got you got this slot. I want to be voted on. I want everyone to be happy with, it. right? But yes, I was interested in. It. Okay. So, is anyone uh, else interested in it? Well, I'll you do that, but I mean, right. I don't Sorry. know what Salvo right. House is probably. Oh no no no! It has to do with Salvo House. It's got to do with. I am newly retired. Hey, hey. 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 that's great. Good night. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. yeah, well, it's nothing to do with Selva it's the, the uh, parking commission. No, no, I know. No, 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 I'm just saying. Okay. It's a liaison between here and there. Yeah, I'm right. just saying with Selva House. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I think you were both helpful. Right. You know. Okay, so you both are interested? Sure. Okay. So we yeah. will do a roll call vote then. Yeah. And hmm. you can do the roll call. Okay. Because I don't remember everything. Yeah, oh, sure, I can do that. So what we do is go from one candidate, then to the next candidate. Do how many vote? Do a count on how many hands mm -hmm. are present okay. for the conversation. Okay. Can so I ask a question of the, the two candidates? Sure. So who's familiar with parking downtown? I mean, I mean, Michael, I see you downtown all the time. And, um, Roy, are you, I know I know you got a car and you're you're getting around. Are, yeah, yeah. Do you both feel you're adequately familiar yeah. with what goes on around parking and accessibility needs downtown? But it's not just downtown; it's yeah, Florence right. also, it's and Florence as well. Yeah. Florence, yeah, all right. You know, mm -hmm. okay. Even up at the VA hospital. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll start to Tori's right. So Susan. Isn't Tori going first? <laughs> Apparently not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tori was going to be last. Okay. okay. Last to chair. Right. Great. Um, Nagy. Ruth. Nagy. 
You know? Um, Either Roy or Mike Nagy. For? Um, electing them to be the liaison for the parking. Oh, um, let's see. Um, I mean, choose which one? Yeah. I probably, who's your vote <laughs> for? Yeah, you have to make a vote. Oh, my goodness. Um, let's see, the liaison for the... Um, I guess I'll choose... Um, I guess I'll choose Mike. Yay. Oh, Mike. Mike. Mike, okay. Mm -hmm. Cynthia? Mike. I'll go with Mike too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know if, if I should vote because I was a candidate. Okay, you've been a candidate Mike. other places, right? And who, did you vote for uh, yourself? Well, Say yeah, yes. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Um, Councilor Labarge. I'm going to vote for Roy. Okay. Mr. Nash. I I'm going to go with Mike. Okay. Well. Mike has it. I, I also well, think both could be good candidates. So. Yeah, both were very good candidates. Mike's yeah. Well, uh, you know, I apologize, Tori. Tori's Tori? the last vote on this. I, I wasn't going to leave him. Go ahead. Ahead. I, I, I vote for Mike. Okay. How about yourself, though, Tori? Thank you. you know, for I, I'm the liaison. Okay. Okay. I, Thank you. Okay. I didn't know if I should see. I didn't know if I should vote for that because of, you know. You're both good candidates. You are. Yeah. We'll find something else for you, right? Mm -hmm. no. Okay. So um, Mike took that and okay. is now um, the, now we do the guest speakers. Well, first we have to let them know that you we um, elected you. Oh. Okay. So you got to. So I'll let um, uh, Owen oh, Freeman, Freeman and Daniels, Daniels, Daniels know. Like yeah. Do you know that committee? Mm -hmm. But then, then they'll probably let uh, them no. know I here when their meeting is on. That way, there you get. You get your information from right here, but you have to take the information from here up there anyway. That's now, really what was going to happen here? Can I even notify them? Okay. And um, it's about the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. What the do you Michael do? Michael, what's going on? No, it's, it's Michael, what will happen here? Oh, yeah. Patty will notify Owen oh, oh, Freeman Daniels, yeah. 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 and she'll give you the email with sending you the information of when the meetings are for dates and time. Other not reasonably anticipate. Oh, okay. I'm just looking for it. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, oh, reserve to topics that you're not reasonably mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, what was the topic again? So the sidewalks in front of the city hall. Okay, so we're going to take one more um, topic out of order, which is the sidewalks in front of city hall, and I'll ask Patty to speak to that. And I promise, Jamie, it won't take I, long. I don't take all the time you do. I'm not in any rush. Okay, thank you. Um, this has come up, um, I don't know how many of you have recently gone in front of City Hall, the sidewalk. It's a mess. Correct. And, yeah. and I've heard from different committee members um, along the way, mm -hmm. as well as um, phone calls that Disaster. have come in from mm -hmm. uh, the public, including being out in front of City Hall, looking at the sidewalk, and two people approaching me to say something about the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a letter here that would be addressed to... Uh, and Ned Huntley, the DPW Director, Rich Parcelletti, Street Superintendent, David Pomerant, Central Service Director, and Mayor David Narkowitz from our commission, and it's about the sidewalk in front of City Hall. And um, the letter reads, the commission, commission on Disability would like to bring to your attention the unsafe and deplorable condition of the sidewalk in front of City Hall. It is through experience and observation of Commission on Disability members, as well as complaints from the general public, that there needs to be immediate attention given to this very dangerous and hazardous sidewalk. The sidewalk has deep grooves in where the wheels of wheelchairs, mm -hmm. walkers, canes, crutches, and baby strollers can get caught. The overall surface of the sidewalk is severely broken and uneven, and there are broken pieces of concrete which create a tripping and a loss of balance mm -hmm. hazard. In general, the sidewalk creates a hardship in accessing a public walkway safely and without fear of harm with a misstep. The Commission on Disability would be interested on in working with you on the sidewalk improvement project and would welcome the opportunity to meet regarding this topic. Your attention and assistance in this matter would be greatly appreciated. And That's then it would good. be signed by um, members. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why you wrote that letter? Did you have a problem too? Or Personally, no, I didn't trip mm -hmm. or anything. I mean, I walked in one of the we came out of well, Susan Wright's office. Right. Uh -huh. um, Councilor Labarge and I were in um, yeah. City Hall on a matter and came out front and 
I don't walk in front of City Hall a mm -hmm. lot. Only, oh, I do. You know, yeah. I, it's awful. It, mm, it, it, it was is. terrible. So um, mm. it was decided that something needs to get done. And, you know, people okay. have complained along the way. And can it, I add to that? If you're going to do that, can you add the crosswalk on Crafts Ave? Getting to the sidewalk, there's a divot only because I know it's there. And I wasn't paying attention. I actually hit that divot, and if you hit it the wrong way, you're going to go down. Okay, so um, that it's in the crosswalk. There's a divot in the pavement, mm -hmm. and it's right near what we're talking about. So maybe they'll fix that at the same time. So that can get added. So mm -hmm. as I highly suggest that to Patty yes. once we were out in front of City Hall that a letter be written. Yeah, it sounds great. Right to the yeah, that sounds he is awesome. As the superintendent mm -hmm. of streets yep. and also to the mayor. Yeah. That way we'll get all three of them together and they'll move on it. But I agree about adding that street. Yes. Yeah. So are you going to just sign it for everybody? Yeah. Well, no, I have, if everybody would like to sign it. Okay. I have, um, sure. Can you add the part, though, I, about the, um, <coughs> the crosswalk? Do you want us to sign it now? Um, I yes, if you can. And okay. I Roy had a question. Sure. Roy, you had a yeah. question? Right. And now, uh, is the sidewalk, was that in the in building improvement that they're doing up there? Was that, was yeah, that included okay. in that? I don't think so, because right? it doesn't because seem like the, it would the be. The building improvement on the outside, there's a lot of building improvement on the outside, including the, the sidewalk that goes up the side there and everything. Uh, all of that is in that budget. So I. I don't know, it's the front sidewalk and the side sidewalk is one that goes down the side there that goes down the hill. I know what we uh, just approved mm -hmm. really yeah. at City Council yeah. was the Alex Diesel way back, the pillars way up in the top. Oh, yeah, the That's what uh -huh. we approved Thank you. Okay. to sure. revitalize that because they were in bad shape. Yeah, no, they, didn't they just approve, that, the, didn't I think they they just approve something for inside and, and for outside? Well, we've done the windows. Sidewalks we've done, we done windows. Right. Yeah. Right. But I think what you're talking about is how they want to put the park out in front mm -hmm. of City Hall. Mm -hmm. Remember that additional mm -hmm. park? Yeah. So, but this mm -hmm. needs to be done. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, why don't we pass around the letter, um, mm -hmm. and if people want yeah. to sign it, and then we will, I'm going to now introduce our guest speaker. They put all, they put all in the And, and what I will do is add, add um, it to, to it. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay. Is there a specific? Yeah, for you, Susan. Well, right under what to sign. Right under, um, just where, put me wherever I need I to be. I don't know where, okay. where about to carry right to right the right. Right at the bottom. Nope, see, it has her name. Oh, okay, just put my, well, you okay. know, can you okay. just put my pen where so, it belongs? So, yeah. I'm very happy Thanks. today to introduce our guest speaker, Jamie Parent from the Franklin Hampshire um, District Attorney's Office, who's here to talk with us about um, the work that she does on behalf of people with disabilities. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, Jamie. Um, uh, as Tori said, my name is Jamie Parent. I'm an assistant yep, district right. attorney at the DA's um, office. Okay. Uh, and that covers both Hampshire and Franklin no, no. counties. Um, our oh. office has a unit that is called the uh, Elders and Persons with Disabilities Protection Unit. Uh, I am the lawyer who's assigned to the unit. Uh, we have a, um, a coordinator whose name is uh, Chris Geffen, who some of you may know uh, for her work on the, uh, uh, the senior with seniors um, and in Triad. Um, but Chris and I, and we have a, um, an advocate who um, is assigned to our unit part-time. Her name is Margaret LaSalle. She's um, a longtime Northampton person. Mm -hmm. um, she lives in New Orleans, right around the corner from me. She's great. Um, she retired um, and came back to work with us a little bit longer and is unfortunately retiring again in July. So we're mm -hmm. going to be not with her. She's not going to be with us, but um, three of us do our work together. Um, we uh, investigate and prosecute cases where um, elders and persons with disabilities are um, victims of crimes. Um, that's our, our main job, but we often also field calls from uh, people with disabilities, um, trying to put them in the right direction, send them to people who might be able to assist them. Um, if we can, mm -hmm. it's not, uh, sometimes we can't. I can give you an example of um, a person recently who contacted us who wanted us to deal with the fact that he wasn't getting enough social security benefits. That's not what we do. Mm -hmm. um, even though we're, the, we're the, uh, the Elders and Persons with Disabilities Protection Unit, we uh, don't do all of that. We're not, the other person kept saying, but you're a disability attorney, so you can help me. And so I had mm -hmm. to sort of direct him a little mm -hmm. bit. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a, a person who investigates um, and prosecutes cases if a, an elder or a person with a disability is a, a victim. 
But um, that also entails sometimes spending lots of time with individuals um, when we don't prosecute cases. Um, because often we have um, issues that are brought to our attention that may or may not be crimes. And um, we spend lots of time with individuals talking with them about whether or not they are in fact a victim of a crime, whether or not uh, they are um, a, perhaps a victim of circumstance and that there's no crime that has occurred, but maybe we can uh, point them in the right direction to get some mm -hmm. assistance. Um, we often uh, send them to, um, if they're a, a, an elder who has a disability, we often send them to Highland Valley Elder Services, or if they live in Franklin County, um, Franklin County Home Care, or if they live in uh, Granby or South Hadley, Greater Springfield Elder Services. Uh, we also do a lot of work with um, the Department of Mental Health and the Department of uh, Developmental Services uh, the Mass and the Mass Rehab Commission uh, when we're investigating uh, something that may have occurred. Uh, we often do, um, rather than charge them with a crime, we often do some reactive uh, focusing. We also often do uh, have many conversations with people from the Department of Mental Health or the Department of Developmental Services about setting up maybe some extra services for someone um, to address some uh, issues or maybe we uh, deal with maybe a person who needs to um, perhaps is a victim of a crime perhaps is not but needs to have some services that um, one of our agencies can help them with. Um, we spend lots of time talking with people, uh, educating mm -hmm. people about how they can keep themselves safe uh, if they're a person with a disability. Uh, uh, we spend lots of time making sure the police are addressing appropriately uh, how they deal with people who have uh, disabilities and there are mm -hmm. um, many different ways that that can uh, be done. We, uh, Chris and I um, were members of a training staff of part-time police officers in Franklin County so that we educated them surrounding uh, laws which affect persons with disabilities, what types of crimes there are, how cases are investigated, uh, talk to them about how they would interact with a person uh, who had certain types of disabilities so that uh, you are not um, making them uh, feel um, misunderstood or feel as though they are not being taken seriously, uh, particularly people with mental health issues. We um, train officers mm -hmm. on how they can um, address those issues. Um, I also attend um, quarterly meetings at the police department uh, in regard to a uh, grant that the police department has in which they are trying to divert people um, with disability and mental health issues from getting into the criminal justice system. Uh, they have mm -hmm. a, a great diversion program where uh, they have officers who are uh, trained for responding to individuals so that they uh, get people uh, who can deal with whatever issues are going on rather than having to arrest somebody. Um, so mm -hmm. I sit on that, that committee and meet with them quarterly uh, to try to brainstorm how we can work um, better together uh, in that area. Um, mm -hmm. I feel lots of phone calls. Mm. Talk to, um, Chris Geffen feels probably more phone calls even than I do because she's in the office a little bit more um, because I'm in court a lot. Um, we have had some very significant uh, cases where persons with disabilities have been um, victimized. We take them very seriously. Uh, we do everything we can to investigate them fully to make sure that individuals who have disabilities um, are appropriately treated in the criminal justice system. That didn't always uh, happen. Um, uh, the former district attorney, Betsy Scheibel, um, was very proactive in getting a unit started where we would um, be focused on addressing uh, people with disabilities and elders because it was an underserved population for a very long period of time um, because both prosecutors and, and police just didn't understand how much focus and attention needed to go towards um, getting these cases prosecuted because often uh, people would think, well, they, I, I can't trust, I can't rely, and what we have learned is that um, uh, Every individual can be a victim of a crime, and every individual can be a credible and reliable witness mm -hmm. as long as they are spoken to and treated appropriately and mm -hmm. they are prepared to proceed through the criminal justice system. And sometimes that means meeting with somebody 10 or 15 times to make sure they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it means meeting with somebody once or twice. I 
Um, I often meet with uh, people who are victims of crimes just to get to know them. I don't even talk to them about whether they've been a victim of a crime. Um, and I often take them to the courthouse and show them what the courtroom looks like and don't even talk to them about being um, a victim of a crime. It isn't usually until the third or sometimes even the fourth time that I've met someone who's been a victim that we even talk about what happened to them because um, I, I find that uh, we need to reach a point where we know one another before mm -hmm. we delve into talking to somebody um, who's been victimized. We just need to bond, form that trust with individuals before they're ready uh, sometimes to talk to you about what it is that happened or are comfortable um, talking to you about what has happened to them. Um, so that's how we go through our, our criminal justice, uh, our criminal prosecution process. Uh, within our office, we um, have cases referred to us in a number of ways. Um, very often they come to us because someone has in fact been arrested for a crime and has been before a judge. More often than uh, than not, though, our cases come to us via what's called the um, Disabled per Persons Protection Commission, which is a, a, um, a hotline in which uh, people who are mandated reporters or who feel as though a person with a disability has been victimized, they call, they report this, uh, they have a, it's similar to when you file a 51A when there's yep. been a child who mm -hmm. you believe has been victimized. Uh, those cases are taken in through a, a hotline that is run by state, the, the Massachusetts State Police. Uh, they then determine uh, whether it's uh, something that potentially could be a crime, and they forward those cases to our office. Uh, many times the person who's listed as the alleged victim of those cases is a, a client of either the Mass Rehab Commission, the Department of Mental Health, or the Dis Department of Developmental Services, and we do an investigation of those allegations in conjunction with an investigator from those civil protective agencies. Uh, police will often go out with an investigator from one of those groups. Um, we will often, uh, if we can, do an interview um, either at our Greenfield office or our Northampton office, where we have um, set up facilities to video, audio and videotape interviews of um, victims of crimes so that they don't have to be interviewed by an investigator from the Department of Mental Health and an investigator from the police department. Um, within the last year, Chris Geffen has been trained um, as a forensic interviewer, so she um, is not only coordinates all of this, but she on many occasions conducts our interviews um, and is well-versed um, in that. So we've been able to um, branch out and be able to conduct those investigations on our own without having to uh, access the interviewer that currently works at the, in the child abuse unit. Often our um, forensic interviewer from our child abuse unit would come in and do interviews with persons with um, disabilities or elders, but now we have Chris trained and so she can do that um, and focus uh, her attention on that uh, versus pulling someone from the child abuse unit. So we've been able to really um, solidify how we investigate cases and we have people within our office who are very well trained um, to conduct these interviews and then follow up with what needs uh, to happen in those investigations. So we've taken further steps to um, make the process um, something that uh, works the best that it can for uh, individuals with disabilities. Um, not all of our cases get prosecuted. Um, we do what we can to put together a case that we think that we can prove. Um, or do we have scenarios where um, it's clear to us that a victim perhaps might not be able to testify at some point? Um, sure, and sometimes that's required, and if we um, can't, uh, don't know that a person is going to be able to be competent to testify, we'll spend time trying to work with them to get them to that point. Um, but we uh, will really do whatever we can to put together a case that um, we feel can go to court and so that a person who's been a victim um, can perhaps get um, some real justice um, as a result of what we've been doing. So, um, in a nutshell, that's what we do. Now, Jimmy, I have a question. Please. Sure. In, say, in the workplace, mm -hmm. all right, city of Northampton, mm -hmm. okay, which we are a business. And we had an incident, incident last year <coughs> that nothing has been really solved about what had occurred. 
Patty went to a meeting with me. Ruth went to a meeting with me. And I had requested a meeting with the director of one of the departments and also the staff person. And it actually involved a statement that a staff person made in front of three of us that was extremely degrading towards somebody with a disability on the outside. Okay. My request as a city councilor was that in the city of Northampton, in the workplace, that everybody be trained on how to work with people with disabilities. Now I know Patty, you're you're supposed to be working on something because yes, um, why don't you talk about that? Because uh, I don't see any movement occurring. Yeah, um, with um, Maya, which is the city's insurer, um, they set up <coughs> trainings and workshops and setting up with Maya. It will probably be in September. Um, on public accommodations, and it would have to do with working with disabled people um, in, within the city. And, and as Councilor Labarge pointed out, you know, it's important for city employees since we all deal with the public, and that's why we are where we are because um, we serve the public. Um, so that the date hasn't been set, but it will be in September, and um, the Commission on Disabilities, of course, would be invited, and um, all of uh, department heads and whoever they feel in their department should be coming. Um, and how would that procedure be done, Patty? Each, each department head would be trained, then they would go back and train their employees? Well, it could be done that way, or let's say in my department, as the department head, I think that there are two other employees who really need, you know, this is just an example mm -hmm. that, you know, they need, um, it, they really need to be trained further about working with the public with mm -hmm. those who um, need um, accommodations. And so that's what it would be. And it, working with human resources, Glenda Stoddard, um, in, in talking about who should be coming, it would be open to department heads and who they felt in their department should definitely be there. But information always uh, you know, should be brought back to the workplace so that it can be shared with um, those employees. Right, and I also feel even at the senior center, just because you have employees, you have volunteers also. Oh, that's very true. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that need to be trained. Mm -hmm. But what occurred was not good. Mm -hmm. And it really angered me. It angered Ruth <laughs> big time. Mm -hmm. And I was not going to sit on that. So it was a member of the public who came in? Who, and it was a member of the public said something who apparently was... went to this other staff person. This other staff person came back and told the three of us exactly what she felt about this person with a disability, hmm. about her disability, so-called disability. Okay, it was not good, and I don't want to go any further with it. I have requested as a city councilor, and I want an update on this, and I will notify the mayor's office tomorrow that this is going to happen in September. It's been over a year now. And nothing's occurred, and Patty has tried pushing it. Mm -hmm. So nothing has been addressed at all. I don't know how far you've gotten with this. Well, in terms of this training with Maya coming in, it, it's going to happen. Okay. But in terms of anything prior to that, with you know, is some documentation of what happened. That and that, that personnel that, file. And I don't know that. HR addressing. Uh, we don't know we that don't. because we went directly to the director right. with the staff person. So that was up to him to do that. I have the date when we had that meeting with that director. I mean, it should be done with, with, as with any personnel issue. It should be exactly. documented as soon as it happens. Because and he agreed with us that every employee <laughs> should go through a training on how to work with people with disabilities. Absolutely. And he also said not just his department, but the whole city and I agree with that right. Right. you know so it's been on a standstill the date I have it all and I cannot believe it's taking this long how long has it been oh god it was January or February not of this year no oh, no, no, no no last year, last year. Last year. 2012 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. too long I mean this could have been so serious that there could have been a lawsuit Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But I'm a lawyer, so I'm serious. So, oh yeah. So this this workshop is 
hopefully going to um, bring a lot of information about how people who work for the city and others, you know, everybody will be invited from this um, mm -hmm. commission because we're kind of, you know, behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there will be other agencies, I'm sure. Do you have a date for it, for it No, it, there's two dates that I'm waiting okay. to hear about. Um, in September, though? In September, yeah. yeah. I would and it would be held here. Yeah. What month? And we have to guarantee 25, but we can I see don't 200. Don't have yeah, yeah. Yes, it'll be okay. here. Yes, okay. yeah. okay. oh, it's great. accessible. That sounds yeah. really so good. In September, yeah. yeah. So yeah. everybody will know more as soon as okay. I know more. But um, I have a question about. I don't want it writing. I want it going. Yeah. I said, I don't want this writing. I'm going to push it again this week. It needs to be done. Yeah, well, it'll be in September, one of those two Thursdays. It's two, it was two series. Oh, yeah. Um, now, Ned didn't do anything, I don't know. Okay, so what's... Uh, I think I Jamie, that. Jamie's yeah. answering questions. Yeah. Okay. Can you... Can I'm you, sorry, you, I didn't hear the question or the answer. Oh. Uh, Mike had a, Mike, Mike asked me a question about, asked me if I dealt with case managers of, of individuals who had disabilities often, and what position they stood in legally in regard to, a, to one of their clients. And what I said is that normally when I talk to a case manager, I, um, I have a release sign so that I can share information. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that um, unless they're also a guardian of that individual, they don't have any real legal standing. They're just there to provide assistance mm -hmm. as they would in any other part of the individual's life. Um, right. Mm -hmm. So I, I deal with them when we're trying to schedule things and put things in place and talk about something that might be helpful, um, but they don't, they can't make legal decisions for that person. They're often, they often sit in meetings when we're trying to discuss cases mm -hmm. and discuss what might be some, in someone's best interest um, or how someone's doing currently, um, things like that, but they're, they don't have any legal authority to do anything unless they're a guardian. Mm -hmm. so. I just had a question too. I was wondering how you work out um, accommodations for people who need them for your interviews. Do you have um, like sign language interpreters available quickly? Um, we, uh, we, how that we, works? we do our best to do that. We, um, we um, have lots of different contact people and phone numbers and we do what we can to get people in so that we can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Court-wise, the court often the court will accommodate us. They have sign language interpreters available at the court, mm -hmm. um, and um, we're able to use other type of assistive devices if we need to. Mm -hmm. um, and in interviewing is the is, is really the hardest the hardest part um, because you, you need to have. I'm trying to think of the last time we did the last time we interviewed a person who needed a sign language interpreter. We didn't record the interview, but we, we, uh, we found someone who could interpret for us, and they went out with the police and uh, did the interview, and then they were we were able to, to translate, they translate that into a report for our prosecution. Mm -hmm. So we do, we do our best work. Mm -hmm. we're, we're pretty lucky in this area that we're able to get people in to, mm -hmm. to do that. Sometimes we have to call the court and have the court um, reach out to someone who does it in court, and then we would um, contract with that person to come in and, and do one of our interviews for us. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, I have another question, please. Now, I did the proper procedures, which I asked for that meeting to be held mm -hmm. with a director and with a staff person mm -hmm. and with a director and also another um, outside person who has actually heard the same thing mm -hmm. that we did. Mm -hmm. Now, my problem is the amount of time that has passed. Mm -hmm. Now, legally, can I file a complaint? Can I oh, file, with whom? say with the city mm -hmm. or wherever, you, I mean, I that the job know. was not taken care of? Mm -hmm. Because I find it so serious mm -hmm. that nothing has been done. I think that given how long it is, if you document that you waited and you filed, you made these certain requests and there's been no action taken and I, I think you can always file a complaint. You know, whether it makes it move any faster or not, I can't tell you that, but it, it doesn't hurt to file a, file a formal complaint so that you can have it, people can know that you're not letting it go. Right. I think what I'm going to do mm -hmm. is talk to our city solicitor talk also to, on this, mm -hmm. Alan Seawald, yeah, because I'm really concerned about the time involvement here and no movement. 
I don't know, I mean, it sounds like it's an HR issue. I don't know if you want to talk to the Labor Council as well, because I don't think Alan does Labor. Well, he handles some of them. Some of them. Okay, oh, so yes, I'm not sure which ones he does, which yeah. departments he yeah. does and doesn't handle labor on. So yeah. I don't know what department is happening, and I don't want to know. No. <laughs> no. Are there I'm any, not mentioning. Are there any yeah. other questions? Right, have a question. <coughs> yeah, I have a question. Sure. Uh, yep. Now, do you handle uh, things like ServiceNet or different organizations like that, uh, complaints against them? I do uh, not. Do. Unless, it's a, unless it's a complaint that alleges a crime. Yeah, well, that's what, I, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, like, <laughs> some of these people that are downtown that are under service now, and, uh, and they're walking around, and, you know, their feet are hanging out of their shoes, and, you know, their clothes are, like, falling off, and, and they're under service now. The service now gives them $10 a week. Uh, you know, they're not buying clothes for them. They're not, you know, not taking care of them. Uh, what you know? What do you do then? I mean, the people are not yeah. capable is, of making that decision. So, uh, ServiceNet is their actual guardian, so I think that we would have to look at who the person's actual guardian is, because there are statutes that allow us to do something if a, a person who's a, a guardian has not has neglected or not provided appropriate care. But if ServiceNet. Um, Essentially, talks or someone who's contracted to do that, so it would be a very fact-driven yeah. scenario. We'd have to know all of the facts um, to decide whether or not it was something that we could really do something about. Four or five rooms down there, and you know, I do, I'm, I'm downtown all the time. I mean, often, they come, they yeah. come to 7 Eleven and sure. stuff like that. You know, they, I mean, their clothes are hanging off. Mm -hmm. They smell and everything, right? You know, and you, yeah, and you tell them, and then you go up and complain to service that, and you know. Sometimes they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Service net is supposed to be taking care of their mental no, health. They're not supposed to be like taking care of their mental health. Yeah. They what? aren't supposed to help them with their mental right. health. But I mean, that's the idea of what happened here with the consent decree. Mm -hmm. You know, 25 years ago, people are no longer in uh, state hospitals right. where people do take care of everything. They are now free to do. They can suggest, they can guide, but they can't force well, that. But when they sign the papers with ServiceNet, they sign their money and everything over to ServiceNet. Right. Does that give uh, ServiceNet the service right? ServiceNet only gives them $10 a week. Does that give ServiceNet the right to watch and to, you know, monitor people's clothing? Wrong. Well, I think it's... I have a comment. I think that's. I have. If you know someone in particular who is down and out, needs clothing, or needs something of that sort, um, send them to the Holly Street Soup Kitchen on Tuesdays and Thursdays because not only do we serve food, we also have clothing and we make a point to find what people need if they're really in, in a hard time. Well, you know, Alan. So, Alan. Right. Okay, we don't need no. to talk to okay. um, so But that's okay. If you know them, send them yeah, over there on Tuesdays you, and Thursdays. What, what is, can I ask, okay. can I ask yeah, a question most, about that resource? What is, what is the month? You. you. Oh, what okay. is the, what's the time? Uh, we're open. I know we have we're there at 9.30, but people start but coming in at 10. Okay. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Holly Street, 10, 10 to noon. Okay. Um, actually, I'll we start serving food at 11.30, so we're there till about 1 o'clock. I just have okay. one But people can come in. in. We have a supply of things, so basics, that people need warm that. socks or anything, no, shoes. Right. You name it. If they need it, we have it. If we don't have it, we'll get it. That's really um, good to know. I might know people who need that. So okay. Where do you need donations for? Where do we make donations? I have a so ton of suits are, and stuff. Are there not suits? We need, we need okay, so let's, day -to -day let's clothes, just really. have not multiple yeah. conversations. Um, mm -hmm. That's okay. Is Are there any other questions for Jamie? Yes, one more. Jamie, yeah. I just found out from Ruth McGrath, it wasn't in 2012 when this mm -hmm. incident occurred. It was, she has a letter, September 2011, and I don't have my appointment book with me for 2011. But I have everything logged of every meeting that I attend. I thought I was the only one who had this. Book. No, <laughs> that's my Bible. Yes. And I mean, that's and what I'm saying. It's been a long period of time and no movement. And has anyone, if you know what an HR is? Patty has. Uh, we went to Joe, talked with Joe Cook about it, our procurement officer, remember? And 
he started looking up mm -hmm. about different types of trainings that they do and so forth. And the last I heard was from Patty, where she was working with human resources. But I'm going to connect with the mayor's office tomorrow to make sure with human resources that they're kicking this in because it's got to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So we well, can kind of start on, on board with it. Okay. Right. Because Patty was really upset with yeah. the whole thing like we were, and it's just been sitting. Thanks, okay. Thank you. Are there, okay. Susan's gone. Yeah. Susan's gone. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Roy's leaving. Are there yeah. any other questions? Go. Okay. Bye, Roy. Yeah. See you next time. I, I only got this to say. Right. Anytime you mention ServiceNet, everyone jumps in to protect ServiceNet. Right. You know, mm. and ServiceNet is not doing right by the people. Because Next door. There's many complex issues with that. Maybe we could have that yeah. conversation that, another time. Yeah, yeah that's a really Absolutely. discussion. That's a, that's a big conversation. We'll have it another time. Um, are there any other questions for Jamie right now? No. Thank you. Jamie, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Jamie. I really appreciate all of your information. I'm happy to, if anyone has any questions, um, actually, I will have my phone number at the office is 413. Four three seven five eight one four. That's my direct number. I can get my voice. Four three seven five eight one four. And feel free to put that in the minutes. That's fine. Okay, can you, I actually, I'm the Disability Services Advocate at Safe Passage. Oh, excellent. And so, um, can you just say your phone number one more time? Absolutely. 413 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. four. So I may definitely have things to collaborate with you on sure. and talk with you about in the future with Absolutely. clients. So this is a great contact. And Absolutely. my name is Tori Eklund. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Jamie. you so much for coming. Yes, and Jamie, I'll probably get a hold of you to come to Social Services and Veterans Affairs. Okay, that ju the July meeting, I'm, um, I'm on vacation. I no, that's that, okay. I have that scheduled already. I can't do you until the fall. Okay, that's fine. I am booked. Great, great, great. great. <laughs> You're welcome. And oh, the law day was excellent. Oh, good. I know. I, I, I had something oh, going on. I couldn't go. I don't remember what it was. It was excellent. My, my 14 year old is watching my six year old. Thank you, Jenny. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for waiting. Thank you. Appreciate no it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Commission on Disabilities? Yes. Um, so we are ready to order what is needed for our audio system. If you remember, uh, Eleanor Rennell had brought that up um, at a meeting um, because of not being able to hear what was happening um, and, and other uh, individuals as well. So, um, but Eleanor brought it to the forefront. Um, so I have to say, Councilor Barge has been very on top of this whole thing. Uh, we were working with Joe Cook. Um, Al you Williams. and I went back and forth yeah. into his office, into the mayor's right. office. And, and then how to pay for it and all that. So right now we're at a point where um, the system can be ordered. And um, so the board need this board, this commission, needs to um, vote on it. That we can uh, expend funds to purchase this uh, system. And we, give them the price. Do we yeah, have enough numbers here to vote them. now? Yeah. Two people on. One. Yes. Three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. So, um, can we? Can someone make a motion now? I make a motion that, well, the funds that we, we approve the. Where's the paper on it? The purchase of the audio the system for the COD for five thousand three hundred and seventy-three dollars and twelve cents. And then we also have to get a cart. So the, oh, how much was that? And the cart, we, I don't know that yet. So then what we need to do is say, and also included, okay, is a cart, okay. at which we don't know the cost. Okay. okay. And Michael has a question. Do you want me to answer it? Uh, yes, well, please. My question was just about the, how much money we're going to yeah, okay. We just read oh, that was your, Okay. And can, can we I have? I ask? I, this may be too much of an accounting question. But how does that stack with the amount of money we have? Very so, well. Yeah, we have enough. There's over ten thousand dollars in the HP revolving account. Okay. Well, I think we can spend double that. So, so we're, we're working with we're our attorney in the city, so okay. 
He has done the contracts, everything. Patty and I have been in and out of the office. Okay, so, um, so we'll have Councilor, City Councilor Labarge has made a motion. Will someone second? Sure. I can't okay. vote. I'm, I'm not here. Okay, somebody who seconded. I can second it. I'm not a member. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hannah. I'm not a member. Okay, Hannah. Hannah seconded. Yes. All in yes. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's great. Okay. So, coming then, soon. Okay. The Do next. we have to sign anything? No, I just I'll write a letter to. Um, the next. Yes. The next. Oh, the next was, for. Oh, the next no, agenda. The next time agenda time. item yeah, is. Um, the number of uh, COD meetings per year. We wanted to see how people felt about it. As it stands now, we're meeting every month. Um, mm -hmm. And so do we want to take off a month in the summer, like July or August, or what do people think? Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Okay, which I one? Or both? I don't care. Generally, I think we've done August. August. Yeah. Okay. So do we want is that, to? Uh, mm -hmm. is that yes. All against our... no, sure. no, because ours says I think we, we should. can have. What is the con the um, new commission? It state? says at least ten meetings per year. I exactly. think exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, do we want to have a motion for? Um, I make a motion that we have the month of August off. Okay. From the commission on disability. Second. We need a second. Yes. Okay. Second. second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay, Don. Should we go for another month, like in January? When it's well, no. I agree with you, Michael, because no. I mean, that was switched already. That was already mm -hmm. switched. We already had that conversation because we right, had... Right, but that conversation, excuse me, can be brought back up. Right. But it can be brought back up on the table. Well, I'm just saying if we've got two months to pick from out of the 12, mm -hmm. we've already picked August. Exactly. Well, the thing is that we um, we had a lot of business come up in January and February, and if there is bad weather, then we would change or reschedule the meetings, and people who were here at the time felt that it was important that we keep those meetings, that there are things that needed to be dealt with during those months. Okay. okay. I'd like to speak on that. I do know because we had... Um, the ordinance that was being put in place, which was for the commission, Patty and I, our hands were tied. We had to get a hold of Tori to let her know that we needed to move that ordinance. And look at how long it took. It took us three months. You know, so I did not make a motion to agree on having a meeting every January or February. It was to have an emergency meeting put in place. But we had, we did oh, have right. another meeting right. where we did have another meeting where a motion was made and voted well, on. We had to. Okay. Yeah. Does that does it make sense then to do? We'll do eleven months, uh, not including August, but like keep one in the bag. Sure. Exactly. We call mm -hmm. an emergency mm -hmm. meeting. Exactly. Right. Right. Nothing saying that we can't have twenty-five meetings a year. Right. Mm -hmm. It just says yeah, you have yourself. to have ten. Right. <laughs> so, so that sounds good. All right. So, um, we're just about out of time. So, um, I'm going to ask that we hold on the last item, which is the discussion on a conference, and we'll add that to next month's agenda. Actually, there is one thing that we do need to bring up because it's happening on Thursday. Okay. What's that? Um, the Council on Aging and Senior Center is hosting the 11th annual Health and Safety Fair here. Oh, and, yeah. Um, yeah. There will be a table for Commission on Disability if anybody wants to work at it. Mm -hmm. um, but that will be part of the 65 different exhibitors that we have come in here. Mm -hmm. And so along with that, please all attend. It's um, what time is that? 10 to 2 on Thursday. I unfortunately have to work, but I hope that this week, Mm -hmm. This week on um, Thursday, the 23rd, yeah. 10 to 2. Yeah. yeah. I've, I'll be there working it for yeah. a little while anyway. All right, so are we done so, here? So, mm -hmm. it, so motion to adjourn? Well, I, adjourn. I would like to have Second. one more thing. I think we ought to develop uh, signs. So we now have places that have Braille and large print venues. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's. I think yeah. it would be a real idea yeah. for okay. us to develop signs 
Yeah. I'm balancing that you told with a little you know, friction yeah. on disabilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why, why don't we talk about that more next time? Can I? Can I just? I, I just will offer this. Um, I don't remember her name. I probably begins with a Z from the uh, bid. Who sent me um, information of where we could Lola? Order. Lola, thank Lola. you. Where okay. we can get decals. So um, after the health and safety fair, I'll work on that. Okay. What is it? But it's Lola. Lola. Lola um, she's the person who came from the bid several right. times. Yeah, yeah okay. and was very very helpful and. Um, okay, so she's the one that you talked. Right. So well, when I no because no what had happened there, Michael. When Patty and I were going around, and thank you, Patty, for going to those other restaurants and dropping them off, she just didn't have time to make signs, and Patty offered mm -hmm. that she would make them. That I would, okay. I would move it. And, you know, at this point, I, I, other than, like, researching some stuff and coming up with what it should say, I haven't, I haven't moved forward with okay. it. But after the health and safety fair, I'd be okay. happy to okay, do well, a number of things. Like some ideas. Okay. Right. Yeah. Her name only is Michael. Lola Kelso. That's A -E -L -S -O. right. A L S O. Okay. Yep, I remember yeah. her. Remember her? Very, very, I remember very her well. helpful. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Seconded? Second. Okay, mm -hmm. bye everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank hey, you all for coming. Uh, Thank you. Hey, Tori. Hey, Mary. I think it's great. What is it? Mary Ann that's going to be working with Peg and the city big time. I think it's great. She did not even know.